Well, it's good to be here this morning. It's good to be in the presence of God. I just just sit there resting in the Lord. And um, a lot of churches do not have that flow of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm not being critical. It's just just the way it is. Uh, we're all at different stages, different understandings, different commitment levels, different desires. But I believe if you're here Sunday morning is because you have a desire to connect with God. Amen. However you want to define that, however you want to assimilate that into you, I need to connect with God. I don't need really to hear from God. I need to connect from God. Sometimes I don't like what God speaks to me, so I, I need to connect with him. Does that make sense? When I was living up in northwest Montana, he said, go leave. And I, that really was not a pleasant voice at that particular time. Amen. Sometimes God speaks to us and we really don't want to adhere to what he's speaking to us. We don't want to do what he wants. We, we want everything laid out. We want to know from plan, part B, part C, to part D, to part E. But it says we live by faith. I mean, there, that, that's just something that's never going to change. We try to isolate ourselves from having to rely on, on faith but ultimately God will orchestrate our lives where we need to trust him amen and I left Montana way back when and I had a truck that had no missionary calling whatsoever on it amen. how many have ever had one of them kind of vehicles I had a 1972 Ford Ranger this is back in the day, <laughs> okay? And I had, and I, I knew God was speaking to me, and I had no desire to leave Montana. I was living up by Glacier National Park, and I thought, I'm pretty well happy here, and I think the pastor would be happy living up in northwest Montana also. Amen? Yes. yes. <laughs> And I, and I remember I was over by Glacier. Glacier's just this huge wilderness. There's two or three wilderness areas connected to Glacier National Park. And um, and I was just fighting with God. I mean, it was just kick down, drag. I am not leaving. I'm happy here. I can trout fish in the springtime, you know, camp in the summer, elk hunt in the fall, and ski in the winter. I, what, what more would a red-blooded young American want? Amen. But that wasn't God's will for my life. And when I was here, before I, I went back to Montana, I was, I was studying in Rhema. And I would just sit there. This is like 82, 83. And the Spirit of God would just come over me. And he would say, I'm calling you outside the United States. I'm calling you outside the United States. Amen? I think there's times and seasons where God speaks to us. And I don't think that goes on throughout our entire life. Let me explain. If you studied the Old Testament prophets, they, didn't, they weren't getting prophecies every 15 minutes. Amen? They would get one, you know, one major encounter, two major encounters with God, and that would define the rest of their life. And so God, during this time at Ramah, he would just keep reiterating that I had a ministry outside the United States. And um, that didn't really fit my plan. Amen. I had a, I had a nice-looking girlfriend, I was living in Montana, and uh, no money whatsoever to go to the mission field, no desire. He says the, the willing and the obedient will eat the good of the land, right? I was neither. 
But how you know? How many of you know it's hard to kick against the pricks? How many you know it's hard to argue against God? Amen. I mean, He has a plan and a will for each one of our lives. And I and I and I, I wrote a book last year. It's I, I entitled it "Stepping Into Your Destiny." I, I find so many people afraid to step into their destiny or what God has for them. But if you want to live life to the maximum, you're going to have to discern what your God-given destiny is. Amen? Amen? And once you understand the will of God, once you start to step into it, then you're going to start experiencing the supernatural on a level you never imagined. Amen? And so finally, I, I surrendered to God somewhat. This is still a work in progress. And I, I remember that people would come up to me and say, you're leaving Montana and you're going to Mexico? And my mother talked to me and said, isn't there enough sinners here? <laughs> Amen. Well, yeah, Montana's chock full of sinners. I mean, believe me, they, they have abundance of sinners. And... Uh, and I, and I left Montana. I had no money. I had a broke down truck. And I remember it was wintertime and I was driving across. I came out of Colorado into New Mexico and I was running out of money. And when you're not a super faith person, money really makes a big difference, right? God was not transporting me by the supernatural in any shape, form, or way. And I found this guy broke down in New Mexico, out there in the plains of New Mexico. And I told him for about 20, 30 miles into town, he says, do you want to eat or do you want me to fill your tank? I can fast another day. Fill the tank. Amen. A supernatural connection. And so just stepping out and allowing God, Peter would have never experienced the supernatural power of God until he stepped out of that boat. Amen. Yeah. We talk faith. We, we sing about faith. But there is a literally literal stepping out of that boat the other 11 didn't want to get out amen yeah. they probably said come on let's go and then no we're fine here peter if you don't come back can i have your jacket <laughs> i've met a lot of the peter's friends along the walk we're with you brother go for it man we're all for you we're all for you but when you can discern the voice of God and you can understand the will of God and what he's directing you to do, you can step out of that boat and begin to walk on water. Amen. I definitely was not going to go this direction in any shape, form, or way. I have really no direction at all, but this is all right. How many, how many are there with me this morning? How many believe God's good this morning? How many want more of God this morning? Some of you are looking at me like, yeah, yeah, callate, vamos la casa. Vamonos. All right. I'll interpret that later. Hallelujah. It's, um, it's good to be able to speak two languages. Amen. It's good to speak. Anybody speak two languages here? I'm not talking about tongues. Okay. What, what do you speak? Chinese. Okay, well. Good luck. <laughs> I want to talk this morning on shadows. I want to share on shadows. This is a message God spoke to me because I believe they're, they're significant in the Bible. I mean, I believe material things have played an important part in the lives of millions of believers. Amen. And I, I don't think we understand the importance of it, you know, they took Paul's handkerchief and anointed him and sent him to sick people. Amen. They took a branch one time when an axe had fell in the water and threw that branch in, branch in and the axe had floated. God can anoint anything he so desires. Amen. I was talking to a pastor, because I'm in a lot of places alone. And at that point in time, titles really don't make too much difference. Amen. 
when you're surrounded by pagans and sinners, what I look for is the presence of God. Amen? That's what I look for. I, I look for the presence and anointing of God. If, God, if, I, can, if I can connect with that anointing, because God's omnipresent. God is everywhere. We're all in agreement on that, right? God is everywhere. But I don't think the anointing's everywhere. Amen? I don't think the anointing's everywhere. I think God is very selective in where he pours out his anointing. God is not looking for perfection because he won't find it in us. Amen? He's looking for a heart that's open to do his will. Amen? That we recognize who we are. I'm part of the family of God. I am one of many sons of God. I am not the son of God. I am a son of God because he gave me power to become a son of God. And, and I know the devil attacks us continuously in our identification of who we are in Christ Jesus. If he can get us, because I deal with this all the time, I deal with a third world mind. And a third world mind gravitates towards I'm not worthy. Amen. I don't deserve this. Nobody loves me. Everybody's against me. This is a third world, how a third world mind thinks. And that's why I think, thank God for the United States. And so I deal with this on a constant, I'm, it's a spirit that seeks to take out the identity that was placed in us the moment we received Christ. And a lot of times it's sins that were committed before we knew Jesus. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Or everybody was just a saint here before they got saved. Okay, we, we, I'm not going to go there. But anyway, I had areas in my life that the devil used against me to keep me in bondage so I wouldn't go to the next level in Christ Jesus. I remember in back in 1982, before starting Rama, I was buying sod because I was helping a, whatever they call it, where they fix up lawns. Yeah, my English is going down. Yeah, landscaping. <laughs> and I remember the devil just kept tormenting me about previous sins that I committed before I knew Christ. And I heard the devil speak. I don't know if you ever heard the devil speak to you. They're probably going to try to cast out devils out of me before I leave here, aren't they? He said, if you would forget this righteousness, if you would forget who you are in Christ Jesus, I will no longer torment you on your past. And I had a book by E.W. Kenyon way back when, Two Kinds of Righteousness. I don't know if you've ever heard of E.W. Kenyon or read E.W. Kenyon. He had a real understanding that we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. I am a new creation. Cleansed, washed by the blood of Jesus seated right now spiritually spiritually i am seated right now this is how god sees us he sees us in ephesians 2 he says we are seated with christ jesus help me on my english here in heavenly places amen that's how god sees us that ain't how we see ourselves I need to change my perspective. I need to get revelation. I need to get understanding to see myself seated with Christ in heavenly places. Amen. I think it's time to go on from where we were 30 years ago. 
Amen? And that takes commitment. That takes sacrifice. And let me just, uh, here I go. Okay, I'm ready, I'm ready to go to the Mexicans here in the afternoon. <laughs> I love to speak Mexicans in Spanish, Hispanic, Hispanic, Espanol. Here we go. We'll connect. Uh, Spanish is, is a lot more emotional. Amen. ¿Quién cree Cristo? Amen. Arrepiéntete. Ya viene Cristo. Doesn't that sound a lot better than English? If there is no sacrifice on the altar, there's no fire going to fall. God spoke that to me the other day. And I thought, that, that's good. If there's no sacrifice on the altar, the fire of God will not fall. And I think as charismatics, for the last 30 years, we have not wanted to put no sacrifice on the altar. And we're waiting for a fire to fall. Amen? What's my sacrifice? To live a godly life before Christ Jesus. Amen? Not the works, not what I can do in the flesh, but what I can do in my heart. That's where the fire of God will fall. And I'm in a continued process, hopefully, of putting more sacrifice, putting more of myself on that altar. But I expect the fire to fall. Amen. Yes. I expect the fire to fall. So anyway, in Psalms 23, it says, Yea, though I walk in the shadow of death. Amen. There is a shadow of death over the world. Amen. In, in Latin America, there is a death cult. There's a death cult throughout the world where they celebrate and worship death. That's just the reality of it. They believe if they worship at the altar of death, this death entity will bless their life here on earth. Amen? Well, I've been... It says the Spirit of Christ has set me free from condemnation and death. What would I want to embrace death for? Jesus came to give me life and life in abundance. I need more abundance. How about you? How many of you need more life? Amen. I think that's just a natural response that we as Christians have should demonstrate or manifest, but there is a lot of people in this world blinded, blinded because they refuse the truth. That's what the word says. They, they receive a lie because they refuse the truth. You just look at your relatives or your neighbors, you just think, don't you see? Amen. How many of you have relatives that think you're crazy? I mean, you know that your relatives would be happy sitting if you're sitting there drinking a beer with them. Amen. They would feel just fine. I mean, you know they don't invite you over as much as they used to. All right, that's probably in the flesh. I didn't need to really go there. Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Fear is a spirit. Fear is natural. You have to deal with both of them. We have not received the spirit of fear, but a power, and hopefully we're demonstrating a sound mind. Amen. One lady told me, she said, I have the mind of Christ, but right at this particular moment, I can't find it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, you all know what I'm talking about. And when all this trouble started transpiring in northern Mexico because of the, the, the drug war and everything else, and there's all these people getting shot and killed, and I'm right in the middle of the whole mess, 
I had to learn not to fear, but also to use the authority that was placed in me. And, and, and a little prayer just don't get it sometimes. Right? God help me. That, <laughs> that don't do much. Right? When, you, when your life's endangered, you, you just, just, God help me. He's just thinking, no, I've already helped you. I placed my authority in you. Use it. Yes. Take dominion over them spiritual entities that are operating in people. Bind them in Jesus' name and walk free. If you don't, you will be entertaining them, them demonic entities for the rest of your life. I mean, they're with me. We kind of just, we don't really want to cut them loose. We just kind of drag them along like a little puppy dog. Because they're seducing spirits. They, God, I didn't even want to go this way. Is this all right? You sure? You're still going to give me an offering, right? <laughs> just want to get some clarification on this. <laughs> I got my collar in my other suitcase. I can go put that on. I'm I'm kidding. But a lot of times we need to come to this point to say, I'm tired of this junk. I'm tired because it's holding me back. I can't sing enough. I can't pray enough. I can't preach enough. Until I deal with this area in my life. Yeah. Amen. Is that all right? Yeah. Yea, though I walk through the shadow, in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. First shadow is death. The whole earth, the whole world, lieth in wickedness. It took me a long time to, to, to embrace that revelation that Paul was given. Because I've, I've seen so much. And um, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly on all this. And I realize this is a statement, Perry Stone. I hope you don't, I hope you like Perry Stone here. <laughs> okay. Anybody don't like him, just raise a finger, just kind of... He said he one of his board members was a he had a he was a high ranking official and he'd go to these big meetings with these world leaders. And this is paraphrasing. He said, they don't pray to Jesus for a blessing. Amen. They pray to Satan. Because they believe Satan was given a, a raw deer deal because Jesus did not deny that he was a God of this world Jesus did not deny that he had the power to give to whoever so ever desired amen so I've seen a little bit of that I've been in like pastor I've been planning churches for the last 30 some years and anytime you start to take territory from Satan there is you're going there's a reciprocal that Satan's going to endeavor to stop you. Amen. Satan don't want to release, relinquish anything. You have to take it spiritually. And then you got to maintain it. Amen. And then you got to be aware that there is a battle going on. Is that all right? And you got to understand that there is a spiritual dimension that there's a spiritual world all around us. Amen. You got to understand that Satan is a God of the air. Why do you think you have so much junk on TV? I grew up watching Leave it the Beaver. And my three sons, how many of you that old? <laughs> I mean, the only, the worst thing was listen to Beaver lie all the time. That was the worst we saw back then. 
I even watched Lawrence Welk the other night. <laughs> and, and I remember my mother would make us watch that every Sunday. Take it away, a one and a two and a three. How many of you remember that? And, <laughs> I mean, these people were super talented people, and it was just like this, this, this world we created, that wholesome world that we no longer exists. Why? Because Satan is the God of the air. And then in Psalms 91, it says, those that abide under the shadow of the Almighty. How many of you know that's where we want to abide? How many of you know it's a cho choice? Amen. I choose to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Isn't that good? But I think we always have to be aware that people are blinded. The God of this world has blinded the minds. That's why we need to move into the Holy Spirit. I don't think we can convince people. I think they need to experience the power of God. Amen? So we have two shadows, two different kingdoms. The kingdom of light, the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of life, the kingdom of death. But this is the third one. If you could open your books to Acts chapter 5. This is what I really want to focus in on. Amen. Verse 12, Acts 5, 12. And it said, through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch, yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And the believers were, increased, were increasingly added to the Lord multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, and at least the shadow of Peter. My question is, what's over you? What's over me? What shadow are we projecting? Because what's ever above us is what we're going to project out. Amen. 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 This is not just memorizing scripture. What is over you? Amen. In the places I go, I'm sure they're here in Oklahoma, is where darkness reigns. People are ignorant that there is a, a kingdom of God. They're completely blinded to it. They have a they understand religion. They see the, the religious churches and stuff. How I many you know Peter was not the most solid rock, solid Christian to ever grace the face of the earth? Amen. He tried to chop a guy's head off. Denied Christ. Started cussing. And this is who Jesus is leaving in charge of his church? God has faith in us. <laughs> Amen. We're looking good. <laughs> We're looking good. And it says, the shadow of Peter would heal the sick. They heard, Peter's leaving the house. They didn't have, you know... Wi-Fi, internet, cell phones. It, amazing to me how news can travel in so many different forms. They said, well, here comes Peter. Bring out your sick. Because the shadow of Peter why? Because the Lord was over Peter. Amen. 
the Lord was over Peter. And where he would go, that shadow, that presence, the glory, the anointing would flow out of him. How are we going to evangelize the world? When the Lord's over us. Amen. I'm not against programs. What I am for is that anointing, that presence of God abideth on us because we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Like I said, God has used tangible things to anoint. He'll use you. In our ignorance, He'll use us. In our lack of understanding, He'll use us. I was down by Guatemala, and um, I, was, I was back in the mountains, and I was driving through this little town, and all of a sudden I was surrounded by all these people. And I thought, well, what's going on? And then they started hopping in my truck. Amen. And my Spanish was not very good at that point in time. And they said, I understood there was somebody sick. And so we're driving through these little... Anybody been down to Mexico before? Have you ever seen real small roads before? And so I'm driving down this road, and we keep going through all these little streets, and, and finally we get to this hut, and they said the sick person's in there. And all, all these people are like five foot two. I mean, they're short people. Amen. I don't look like a Mexican. Nobody ever confused that with me. Amen. I'm six foot two, blonde hair and blue eyed. That kind of separates me. That differates me from the rest of the populace. I was in Germany. I thought, okay, I'm so tired of getting, being taken for America. I'll just sit and lean against the wall. Everybody came up and started speaking to me. Do we radiate that we're Americans or what? Amen. And so I walked into this little, this little house, this little hut with these, these brethren. And they said, this lady's sick. And you could just, this lady was speaking in tongues of a different tribe that she never learned by this witch doctor that she went and visited. Amen. It was weird. It was just weird. She's just sitting there. Nobody knew what to do with her. What do you do with a demon-possessed person? Amen. Send her to commerce. Amen. <laughs> we'll get her straightened out. And they said, this lady's sick. And they said, they said, well, pray for her. And I said, the lady's not sick. She's just radiating, this emanating out of her, this demonic entity. They said, well, do something. And I thank Rama for this, that, that we do have authority in Jesus' name. I don't know what, you know, where Rama's at now, but back then, Kenneth Hagin, he walked in authority and in power, and he was able to impart that to us back in the day. Amen. And so I thought, all right, let's, let's just pray for him. We started laying hands on her. Started rebuking these demons. And I, and I remember these, Lesser demonic entities, because Satan just don't come in by himself. Amen. He'll bring a multitude or, you know, it, it's like there's a collection of, and you could, you could sense in the spiritual realm, these lesser demonic entities releasing her and leaving. And God, and, and I knew by the spirit of God that the ruling principality was hidden within her. Amen. And so we I just kept rebuking, I kept rebuking, I kept rebuking. And finally, this is this is this she just started pushing this demon with her fingers out of her throat. And I thought, this is weird. Amen. I was two, three weeks ago, I was in Montana happily fishing. And now I'm watching this lady push these demons out of her throat, I guess, and just left in the spirit of peace 
just descended on that house. And so, you know, being the super Christian, I said, well, let's pray so you get saved. Make sure that things don't come back. <laughs> and so we got her saved. And so we all walked out to my truck. And all these Mexicans, now instead of 10, I had about 20 of them in the back of my truck. My truck was like this. I'm trying down the road. And uh, this is like 10 o'clock in the morning. I was going up to the top of the mountain to go preach, do a crusade at the top of the mountain. We're way in the back of nowhere. This is the end of, this is the, end of the road. And so she's, everybody's speaking dialect. I mean, so I'm, I can barely speak Spanish. So dialect is just out of the question. And she's just telling everybody what happened. And so at midnight, she gets up to testify. And she says, well, they prayed for me, got me set free. Now I was blinded, but them demons that blinded me released me and I can see perfectly. I thought, man, we don't understand what's going on in the spiritual sense, do we? I thought, well, tell me these things. Amen. Let me know what's happening. A lot of times we don't know what's going on in the spiritual realm. Amen. God don't, God's not obligated to share everything with us. I saw that lady seven years later and she's still set free. She's a little bit heavier, but she's still set free. Amen. <laughs> that, was, that was just, <laughs> all right, maybe you might want to erase that off. <laughs> Help me, Ron. <laughs> You're on your own. The shadow of Peter. What's overshadowing us? Amen. If God can use somebody like Peter, he can use you. Fishermen are not, we're not the most holiest people that ever graced the face of the earth. Amen. I've worked with fishermen on the coast down in Mexico. They, they, yeah, we'll just leave that right there. They are not the most Christian God like people. And so God could save somebody like Peter, transform Peter, and that, that even his shadow. would bring healing, deliverance, and salvation. I'm expecting, you know, I understand what's going on politically, but I, 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 I'm looking for revival. Yeah. Yes. Amen. I'm looking for revival. I'm looking for the church to wake up. I'm waiting, looking for Christians to wake up. In, amen. What are you looking for? God's going to take care of us. God's going to take care of us. Amen. I'll say this. I've been living in this for 33 years. I would say this. The Mexican church, the real Mexican church, their eyes are on Jesus. Amen. I'm ready to go on with Jesus. I'm ready for revival. I'm ready to fulfill the call of God. I think one of the saddest things is, is when we explain to God why we did not have time to fulfill our destiny. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying go to the mission field in any shape, form, way. But God has placed you here in Miami Commerce or wherever you came from to let that shadow flow out of you. Amen. Peter didn't have a healing line. Didn't anoint nobody with oil. Just walk down the road. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then speak in tongues. Just walk down the road. And people were getting here. I've been in one area like that. And it was like the book of Acts. I was, I was waiting outside this church that we planted. With about 10 or 15 people. And they all start speaking in tongues. I mean, they were really going at it. They were just slinging saliva and snot everywhere. I mean, they were going everywhere. 
And the pastor said, well, what should we do? Let's start a song. song. I just, just let them go. Amen. <laughs> when God starts moving, just let them flow. Amen. I just it's just seen, you know, I, I remember in crusades of just watching young men just getting just sitting there shaking under the power of God. They had no concept of God. And that's what's happening. That's what I believe is going to happen. People with no preconceived ideas are going to experience the power of God. And once you experience the power of God, you can never deny that it occurred in your life. You might run from it, but in the back of your mind, you know God is real. Amen. Amen. Let's just let that shadow fall on us. Let's choose to abide under the shadow of the, the Almighty. Let's cut off that shadow of death. Amen. I think it's an individual choice that each one of us has to make. I choose life. I choose life. I've said before you, life and death. Amen? How many have read that scripture before? And then it goes on to say, choose life. Here's the inside. Choose life. Good choice. I choose life. I chose life 41 years ago. Thank God. Amen? Thank God I, I basically stayed on the straight and narrow. Had a couple of detours here and there, but, <laughs> but you know, for 41 years, it's been denying the flesh, taking up the cross, and following him daily, and dying to self. If there's no sacrifice on the altar, you might as well forget any fire's going to fall. Amen. And I, I guarantee you in the United States, we've done everything but put that sacrifice on the fire, on the altar. Are we all right this morning? How many believe God's speaking to us this morning? How many believe it's a good day to be in the house of the Lord? How many believe that God started a good thing in us? He's faithful and just to finish it. We're part of the kingdom of God. We have a... It, a destiny to fulfill. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. There, you know, there's a couple areas in my life I'd like to get straight before I've seen God, but overall I'm okay. How many can say amen to that? Well, don't raise your hands. I, I can just look at you and tell you which ones are. Amen. <laughs> I think we all are in that, that area. But you know, hey, We've been born again, washed by the blood of Jesus, redeemed, filled with the Holy Ghost. Our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. When we get to the, the pearly gates, you just want to hear one thing. Enter in good and faithful servant. The highest calling the, 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 there's no higher title than to be called a servant in the kingdom of God amen everything, everything else is given that has to be earned amen we doing alright how many glad you came this morning I'm going to quit because one time I preached four hours in Mexico I thought it was Billy Graham and Teal Osborne all wrapped up in one. Four hours. Nobody came the next day, but for four hours I had them. <laughs> Even the pastor looked like he didn't want to be there. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand to our feet. God is good. God is good. He's with us. We're with him. Some of us more than other ones, but hey, we're all a work in progress, aren't we? Amen. He started a good work in us. He is faithful and just to finish it. That should be the confession of some of you, because some of you doubt. Some of you battle with that. But let me say that it's a lie from the enemy. Amen. Amen. We're transformed. 
We're not chained. Some of us need to transfer. We don't need to change spark plugs. We need to pull the motor, change the rings, change the bearings, change the pistons, do a valve job on it, reset the timing chain. Some of us need to come. That's why it says we're transformed. He didn't say change. Change would be good. He says, we're, he should have said, you need a transformation. I'm not speaking to you in particular. <laughs> Sorry, brother. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I needed a transformation. I still need a transformation. Because we're only going to go so high as our commitment allows us. Amen. And John saw a door open. He said, come up higher. John didn't have to go up that high. Amen. On the island on the Patmos. He said, I saw a door open. I heard this voice saying, come up hither. Well, we don't have to go. How many have seen people refuse to go with God? How many have seen people refuse to accept Jesus? And you knew God was speaking to that individual. Well, I choose to go up higher. I choose to receive Christ. I choose. I choose. I make that choice to abide under the shadow of the Almighty.